do for Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, 1971. A poor but hopeful boy seeks one of the five coveted golden tickets that will send him on a tour of Willy Wonka's mysterious chocolate factory. So figured I'd finally do a review for this. Um, it's one of my favorite movies. It's just something very uh, magical about the movie. And in some ways dark, too. Um, so, it's based on a book by Roald Dahl, obviously, and directed by Mel Stewart, who I haven't seen any of his other work, but, so you got Gene Wilder, you know, perfect, perfect casting, um, I think all the kids are great actors in this, I really have no complaints with the acting, And it starts off with Charlie, and he's very poor, and his mother, his father's out of the picture, and, you know, he has his grandparents there on both sides, and they're so poor that they all sleep in one bed, which is kind of weird. Um, and he has, you know, just a little tiny bit of money, and he buys a couple chocolate bars, and he gets one for his birthday, but the ticket isn't in there. But in the end, he spends the little bit of money he has, and he's able to get one of the golden tickets. Because one of them was, was falsified by this guy in, I think, South America or something. So, But, um, and this is going to be full spoilers, obviously. You know, it's 1971. So, if you haven't seen it by now, I mean, come on. Um, I mean, I think uh, Gene Wilder steals the show. If there was no casting of Gene Wilder, the movie would not work at all. To me, Gene Wilder is Willy Wonka. It's like they have that new prequel Wonka movie. I, don't, I actually hear it's a decent movie, but um, I don't know. I'll maybe check that out eventually, but if you could do me a favor and smash that like button, that'd be great. Really helps with the channel. And uh, on to the review. So, it's an amazing movie. It's one of the most famous of all time. There's this, then there is the remake which I'm not a fan of, from Tim Burton. Tim Burton kind of does all the obvious Tim Burton stuff in it, and it's a bunch of CGI, and, um, you know, Johnny Depp just does the weirdest performance I think he could have thought of, which he's like, he's playing like Michael Jackson, and it's just such a weird choice. But I think, I think sometimes Johnny Depp just does stuff just to be weird. So, but, um, anyways, and then it, it takes about almost like 40, 50 minutes to get into the factory. But the whole movie is just incredibly watchable. It's, it doesn't get boring at all, almost, I'd say. But yeah, the standout roles, Gene Wilder and, um, Peter o Ostrom. I'd say also as Charlie is great. I guess Roald, Roald Dahl wasn't a fan of the movie. He had problems with it, um, which is why they he, there is a book, another book, and he, but he didn't want to uh, make it, which it's just crazy, like. I don't really know his major problems with the movie, but he was apparently not happy with the final product, and he didn't want to uh, sell the rights to his other book to make a movie out of. So, uh, my favorite song in, in the movie is is going to be uh, it's probably most people uh, Wonka singing "Pure Imagination." 
I just love that whole scene when when they enter the actual. I don't know what you would call that. It's like uh, a bunch of edible things, and apparently twenty five percent or thirty percent of everything you see in there is edible. So that that's pretty incredible. Um. I just love how that scene starts with him starting to sing the song. And he's kind of like walking forward, what one step back, walking forward, one step back. All that was improv, apparently. And and then he's kind of like using his cane to kind of like make sure they don't go in front of him. Um it's just, it's, it, I mean, if there's ever perfect casting, I would point to Gene Wilder or Willy Wonka. I mean, his outfit's great, you know, kind of almost looking like the Joker in some ways. And in some ways, this is a very creepy movie. Um, I think Wilder definitely stays on that line of going too creepy or too silly and he and he kind of straddles that line and then i think it's perfect um i mean his introduction's amazing and apparently that he said that that's the one thing he wanted to change in the script otherwise he wouldn't do it was um him walking and and have and I mean, it's pretty crazy he's like impersonating a crippled person <laughs> But again, there's that dark humor. And, you know, he's got a cane and he's like barely walking and the cane gets stuck. And then he, then he does a somersault, pops up and he's like, hey, it's fine. Come on, come on in. I love that part. And, and he said he wanted to change that because uh, then from now on, you don't know if he's telling the truth or not. Which is an interesting choice. You know, Gene Wilder just seems like such a good guy. Um, remember when he, he passed in 2016? You know, he haven't done anything for a while for movies, but, you know, you watch him in interviews and just, he, he just, there's a warmth that uh, comes from Gene Wilder that I think is missing in a lot of st movie stars today. Um, very interesting actor. I mean, he could do comedy, he could do drama. He could do almost anything, really. It seemed like it. So, definitely one of those great old actors that... I just don't think uh, are in Hollywood anymore, really. I mean, one of his first movies was Bonnie and Clyde. But he was in The Producers as Leo Bloom. Uh, Mel Brooks movie. Start the Revolution Without Me. Never seen that. So I've seen Bonnie and Clyde. I've seen The Producers. But everything before Willy Wonka I haven't seen. Uh, Blazing Saddles. Young Frankenstein he's amazing in. Silver Streak. But I I'd say this is my, my favorite uh, Gene Wilder performance. The Frisco Kid. So, you know, and then he had a, he had a bunch of movies. Like Stir Crazy. With Richard Pryor. They were good friends, you know, apparently, and, um, you know, it's too bad what happened to Richard Pryor. He got very sick. And Richard Pryor had his, his own problems, you know, uh, drug use, alcohol use. And, um, fortunately, I think it took its toll on him, but... But yeah, Willy Wonka, uh, that's probably my favorite uh, scene in the movie, too, when he's showing them all of those things that they can eat. He's singing Pure Imagination, 
and then right after that, uh, you know, the uh, one of the kids falls in the river, Chocolate River, and then he gets sucked up. Um, and then they go on that boat, and it's like a psychedelic trip. <laughs> That's also, you know, probably my number two favorite scene. Um, and that song, too. It's very creepy. I remember as a kid watching this, I was like, wow, this is really weird. But, but yeah, then he, he gets, you know, sucked up into that, and, and his mom's freaking out. And then he gets the Oompa Loompas to go find the kid. But it is interesting. You never see the kids again. Um, like that kid. And then you have uh, the one that's a spoiled brat. She sits on the good or bad, bad egg thing. Says bad egg. She falls through. And then the dad's freaking out. And he's like, oh, it goes it goes to the furnace where all bad eggs go. And then he's like, you're joking. He's like, no. So then he jumps into that thing. One of the kids gets shrunken by Wonka Vision. And um and then the mom puts him in in a little purse. And <laughs> and then he's gonna he's gonna have him stretch stretch it out in the in the taffy factory, stretch him out. And then I love that little line that he says to the Oompa Loompa. He's like, he's like, no, I won't hold you responsible. <laughs> so it's it is in some ways a very dark movie. Like like do like do these people die? Like you don't see them again. Um, I was watching someone review the new one, or whatever Tim Burton's, and apparently at the end you see all of them alive. So it's just. It's like, you know, that's that that's a, a risk that could piss off a lot of parents. Apparently some parents did not like this movie when it came out because they thought it treated the children terrible. Um, but the new one's weird, or whatever, the Tim Burton one's weird because it's like Johnny Depp is uber creepy and just weird. Like, I would not want him around children. And... But then at the same time, they kind of play it safe by showing that, that none of the children die. So, or none of the children die and none of the parents die or whatever happens to them. I mean, I assume that the kid that was stuck in the chocolate uh, um, was 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 okay because he sounded like that they'll find him. Um, but the other ones, uh, you know, I'm not so sure about. So... The movie of its time, they would never make this anymore. They would never do those jokes anymore. I wouldn't think so. I haven't seen the very new one, Wonka. I will watch it eventually, but it's just like, can anyone really replace Gene Wilder? I don't know. Um, apparently, when it came out, it didn't even do that well. So, just kind of crazy, but... um. I know Roger Ebert loved it, though. Yeah, he gives it four out of four stars. So to him, he said it was an instant classic, but um, I don't know. I heard it didn't do that well when it came out. Because if you look at the director's career, you know, he didn't really do that much that I've seen. I mean... I don't know, you, you would have thought that this would have, like, catapulted his career to the next level, but... I, I just haven't seen these movies. Mean Dog Blues, The White Lions, a TV version of Casablanca. So, I, I don't know, but... Um, let's see, let's see who the cinematographer was. Arthur Abetson. Beautiful cinematography. Um, 
wasn't nominated for anything. Uh, Academy Awards, Best Music. Well, that's it? Really? Man. I would have thought set design, costume design, at least, you know? And I'd say, you know, acting for Gene Wilder, but whatever. But, um... Yeah, so Gene Wilder died in 2016. Peter Ostrom changed his social media profile to former child actor, veterinarian, inherited a chocolate factory on August 29th, 2016. You know, as a reference to the end of the movie. Which is a great end to the movie. Uh, it's very, it's dark because, you know, they went, they drunk, they drank the fizzy liquid or whatever that made you float. And then he says that they touch the walls, and they have to clean the whole walls, has to be all sterilized. And um, he, then he, he says that, you know, that breaks the contract, so you will get nothing. You're supposed to get a lifetime supply of chocolate and candy. Um, so you will get nothing. That scene always creeped me out as a kid, because he's, like, so angry. And he's, like, reading the thing, he's like, etc., 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 and he's just so angry. Um, and then the grandpa's there, and he's like, you know, you're you're inhuman to treat children like this. And then they're about to leave, and they they all stole a, um, you know, a gobstopper. So he's like, we'll we'll sell that to to Slugsworth, who is throughout the beginning of the movie, and. Um, but then he puts it on his desk because he's like, no, it's not right to steal it. And then he grabs he grabs the uh, candy and he starts to sing. And he's like, OK, you, you passed the test. Now you're going to inherit my factory. You'll be the next Wonka. And you won't be in poverty anymore. And, uh, and you know, your whole family can come live here. So it's just a great ending. And it's not obvious either, because there's that, you know, kind of trick that he's playing on them. So, I don't know. It's just a great way to end the movie. And then they go into the glass elevator, and then they fly up into the, um, above the city. And that's another thing. It's like, where? when does this take place? Where? I don't know. Some people are like, you know, the 30s. But, you know, there's technology that wouldn't exist then, so... I, it's just timeless, I guess, and... A lot of people are saying it's somewhere in Germany, so... I could probably buy that. Somewhere in Germany, maybe the UK, like in the 30s, like London or something, but... Um, it's got this great feel, this timeless feel. And then Slugworth comes out. And Slugworth's been working for Wonka the whole time. He's not really Slugworth. And um, and it's, it's just all revealed then. I also always loved in the begin the first part of the movie, Slugworth just always seemed to be at the right place at the right time. Almost that he knew who was going to get the, the golden tickets, it seems like, to me. It's very odd, but... There's this magical quality to the movie that doesn't quite make sense, but I think it all works, though. And that's all that matters. So... So the child actors have stayed close over the years, regularly attend fan conventions together. The Chocolate River was made from... 150 gallons of water, real chocolate and cream. The filmmakers had to change the formula for the Chocolate River, because originally the concoction they were using turned blood red. <laughs> because of the cream, the mixture began to spoil, and by the end of the filming, it smelled terrible. Oh, man. Michael Bowler, who played Augustus Gloop, later described it as dirty, stinky water. <laughs> Uh, 
The song Wonka sings on the boat ride, There's No Earthly Way of Knowing, are the only song lyrics taken directly from Dahl's books. All of their songs were written specifically for the film. The opening credit sequence was filmed at the Toblerone factory in Switzerland. In the scene when the t when the tour first enters the Chocolate River room, Julie Don Cole didn't know the rock that she uses to crack the large piece of candy open was real, and she drops down onto it, injuring her knee. If you look carefully, you can see her left stocking has blood on it. She, she still has a scar on her knee from the injury. Mel Stewart initially wanted to reveal that, that Willy Wonka has strategically placed the golden tickets to give the factory to Charlie. The idea was dropped, but hints remain, including Mr. Wilkinson act, acting as Slugworth. Conveniently shows up whenever a ticket is uncovered. Yeah. Okay, so they were kind of maybe going to do that. The 30th anniversary DVD release of the movie, the audio commentary is done by all five of the child actors. The movie was shot in Munich, Germany, but the producers had to go outside Germany to recruit enough little people to play the Oompa Loompas. Many of the people cast as Oompa Loompas, German or otherwise, did not speak English fluently, if at all. This is why some appear to not know the words of the songs during the musical numbers. Mel Stewart didn't want to show too many vehicles as the movie would never feel dated. The coat hangers are the spray painted hands of five carpenters working on the movie. <laughs> yeah, I love that. The coat hangers are just like, like these random people's hands spray painted gold. It just almost it just adds to the creepiness of the movie. It's like creepy, but also, but also not too. So it's a very interesting movie to me. Gene Wilder's Wonka costume sold for almost seventy four thousand dollars in twenty twelve. That's an awesome costume. I mean, I think it. I mean, inspired some of the Joker costumes we see in the movies. Twenty fourteen the movie was added to the National Film Registry by the United States Congress. So Roger Ebert says it's based on the well known Roald Roll Dolls children book and it was financed by the Quaker Oats Company. Oh. As an experiment in in providing high quality family entertainment. It, it succeeds. It doesn't cut corners and go for cheap shortcuts like Disney. It provides a fast Great cast, Gene Wilder as a compulsively distrustful chocolate manufacturer, Jack Alberton as the game, as the game old grandfather, the game old grandfather, okay, a first rate production, and I keep coming back to this genuine imagination, the story, the story like all good fantasies is about a picturesque, picturesque journey, Willy Wonka, is the world's greatest chocolate manufacturer, and he distributes five golden passes, good for a trip through his factory and a lifetime supply of chocolate. Each pass goes to a kid who may bring an adult along, and our hero Charlie, a poor, honest newsboy who supports four grandparents and his mother, wins the last one. The other four kids are hateful in one way or another and come to dreadful ends. One, one falls of the chocolate flake and is whisked into the bowels of the factory. He shouldn't have been a pig. Another is vain enough to try Wonka's new teleportation invention. Winds up six inches tall, but the taffy pulling machine will still have him back to size, right? <laughs> if these fates seem a little too gruesome for you, reflect that all, all great children's tales are a little gruesome, from the Brothers Grimm to Alice in Wonderland to Snow White, certainly not excluding 
mother goose. Kids are, are not sugar and spice, not very often, and they appreciate the poetic justice when a bad kid gets what's coming to them. Yeah, I, I, I'd agree. I mean, some of the kids are pretty terrible, especially uh, the one that just is spoiled. She's like, I, I, I want this now. I want you to buy me a Oompa Loompa. I want you to buy me the um, geese who lays the golden egg. I want this now, now, this, this. And the dad's like, always pulling out his checkbook, saying to Wonka, okay, Wonka, how much do you want for this? And Wonka's like, it's not for sale. And like, the, the girl cannot, cannot fathom that. Like, no, I want it now. My dad can buy anything to give me. It's like, no, it's not for sale. It's not your property. So... It is dark, but it's it's all tongue in cheek, and um, has a good sense of humor to it. So, and I think it it would hold up. I mean, if a kid watched it today, you know, it's a little dark, but you know, there's a lot of imagination and fantasy, inventiveness. So, but yeah, um, I've always loved this movie. And, you know, Roger Ebert compares it to uh, The Wizard of Oz. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory is probably the best film of its sort since The Wizard of Oz. It is everything that family movies usually claim to be, but aren't. Delightful, funny, scary, exciting, and most of all, a genuine work of imagination. Willy Wonka is such a surely and wonderfully spun fantasy that it works on all kinds of minds. It is, and it is fascinating because, like all classic fantasy... It is fascinated with itself. That's a good way to put it. Wow. Yeah. I'd say Lord of the Rings does that too. It's fascinated with itself, with, with the world that it's in. You know, it's dark, but there's a lot of stuff for children too, so it, it, it balances that really well. But... Um... But yeah, it's just a great movie. Uh, I guess a couple of years before it, um, the guy who plays the grandpa won an Academy Award. So, you know, you're, you're working with just really good actors that know what they're doing. They take the material seriously. Gene Wilder takes it totally seriously. And I think it totally pays off. But, yeah, um, that's about it, though. Uh, <clears throat> R.I.P. Gene Wilder, uh, you will be missed. Incredible movie. I still think it totally holds up. I don't think it dated, like, at all. From the first shots of the movie where it's the candy uh, being made, and then they go into the candy store, right into a song. And I'm not even big on musicals. I'm really not, like... You know, like the new Joker movie, I'm kind of skeptical that it's going to be good, but I hope it is. But I'm not, I'm not big on musicals, but this one, it doesn't even really feel like a musical to me because the story is so compelling. And um, the musical numbers are there, but I don't think they overwhelm the movie. So, but um, yeah, that's about it, though. Uh, 1971, Willy Wonka, The Chocolate Factory. Uh, classic, uh, hopefully for all time. So, yeah, um, just an incredible movie. Great color, too, to the movie. And I'm surprised it wasn't nominated for set design and stuff, but it wasn't, so. But, uh, yeah, that's about it. Like, comment, subscribe, and see you next time.